Let us start this lecture uh, with a thought process from Mahatma Gandhi. According to him, to forget how to dig the earth and tend the soil is to forget ourselves. It is really aptly said by him that it is important for us to cultivate or do farming ourselves for our own food. And we have seen in the last lecture that how the modern farming has spoiled not only the food, but also the environment and our own health and also the health of not only the animals, also the other plants. And it is having a very bigger ramification on the entire ecosystems. So, therefore, it is important for us, you know, to look at like uh, the how to overcome the problems with the modern agriculture practices, because we are in deep trouble. So far the food is concerned, so far our life is concerned, so far the whole entire ecosystem is concerned, because of using the chemical fertilizers and also the modern way of cultivations and we have created unemployment. right? and lot of air pollution, water pollution and then soil pollution what not. Now, what are the solution then? How to go about it? Any idea? Because if we will not use the chemicals, chemical fertilizers, pesticide, insecticides, then what will happen? Our production will be going down and at the same time we will we will be using more, then we are spoiling the soil, we are aggravating the problem. So, what are the solution then? So, if you look at for that reason, we need to go back to the ancient agricultural technology with a modern outlook. It is not that we will just copy and paste what our ancestor did and we sustain for years together. We need to also do research on that and find out the ethos behind it and adopt it in the modern time. Therefore, it is important to look at the ancient way of farming. So, if you uh, for that let us look at agriculture is as old as our civilization and you might be knowing the legendary figure in our Puranic time is Krishna, all of you know. So, Krishna name itself is comes from a root word known as Kri, Krisati iti Krishna. That means, it is basically you know who will be I, according to me who might have started the organize or the agriculture. And if you look at little bit and connect this narrative, these are narratives you need to connect. And he was a portent of the cow, cow rearing the cows, right? Not only for the milk and also this thing. If you do remember that Govardhan Parvat, you remember that story Govardhan Parvat that you know where he, he was having a fight with the Indra. Indra means the person will be giving the rains, right? That means the irrigation system he must have started. And if you look at the Balaram, Balaram was having what? Plow, his brother Balaram. So, you need to connect and see, unless we look at from that narratives in the perspective, you know, we won't get it. So, if you connect all those things, you will find look, it might be from that period, you know, improvised agriculture might have come up using the cow dung for the as a manure and the irrigation system, plow and other things. You need to connect it. 
I am sure that most of you may not have these ideas connecting together, looking different way than the what traditional going on. So, if you look at there are several small small stories will be there also, we will have to can tell us that ours is an agricultural society earlier and today we must be agriculture society, not an industrial society, the way we are moving towards. Because food is important and good food is important as well for our sustenance, so also the sustenance of other animals, insects and other things. right? So, agriculture has been primary productive activity in India because that is the primary wealth. The rest of the things are secondary wealth, but we are giving more importance on the secondary wealth, which is not the right thing. And evidence from the very early time, uh, you know you can get in particularly Mesolithic time, late stone age phase around 8000 BC, BC means before common era, right. And it is more than that it will be, but this is the accepted fact that we are having. There are if you look at these pictures, these are all basically paddies being taken and then you look at there is one instrument here, this person is holding right, this instrument you know. And what is that? Can anybody tell me this one, this, this portion right, what is that? This is an instrument for cutting ok. So, uh, similarly if you look at uh, there is another instrument here right which is there and there is another instrument we will we'll be talking about technology this another instrument here could you see that this is another instrument you know there is another instrument here what are those things these are all earlier days people will be having right so we need to look at that and let us see the major aspects of the farming. And if you recall from the history that most of the civilizations across the globe is basically started where? Wherever water is there, river basin, you know. So, you can think of there is a river here, right? These are river, you can see this is a boat and then there is a in between some place where there is a some trees, you know and water is important for your cultivation. So, therefore, water is there means how to take this water, this is your a mechanism by which you can take very easily because this is a lever mechanism, right. It can ease your work input, am I right? Are you not getting this is a, this place it will be going up you know down and then up in that way and then you will put this water here, water will come over and then these are all valves, these are all valves or the gate valves right. You can say that uh, gate or controlling valves, controller right I can say and then water can come over here and beside this of course, you can take some material also by hand may, maybe some manure or some things and you will have to also use a plow for cultivations and uh, there is a you can carry some collect this material, this is the sowing, I mean like if you look at the processes involved in that. And agriculture if you look at as I mentioned earlier that we will be using a lot of tools for carrying out the farming work. And of course, the plow is one important tool as I told. So, far our narrative goes, it is the Balaram who must might have invented the hull because it is known as haldar. Hull means plow, right. The person who is carrying we can call haldar, dharan karta hai, to usko haldar kehte Balaram you, 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 are, you do know, do not you know that Balaram was having a you know ayud means weapon as a hull, <laughs> right. So, ploughing is uh, this thing and when you talk about plantation, the soil is important, so also the seeds and then it will be also sowing and then sowing methodologies, we will be discussing about that. Transplantations is very important and uh, let me ask you a question, what do you understand by the transplantation? 
And similarly, when you talk about all this process, then we need to also improve the soil by using the manure and fertilizer. The question arises: what are the differences between manure and fertilizer? That question might be coming to your mind, right? And we will be using pesticides, insecticides and other things also, because always pest will be there. Even in ancient time, pest will be there. Insect might be there, but today in insects are too many because of imbalance in the nature, but uh, at that time it might be there also in ancient time. So, agriculture tools, let us look at some of them like digging stick, right. So, if you, uh, you know, go to the history, you will find we are having evidence of digging stick, right, from uh, let us say Mehrgar, uh, now in Baluchistan, earlier it was in a part of India. India like uh, Chirand in Bihar, right, if you look at, and Ahar in Rajasthan, and Nevesa in Ahmedanagar since Stone Age, right. I have already discussed Stone Age is long time before your Indus Valley civilization, right. And this stick, you know, consists of pointed, you know, uh, sticks with a sharp edge. For example, if you look at this is a sharp edge, this one side, this is a sharp edge, right, isn't it? This is a sharp edge. And there might be another, this is a two side, there might be another one here also, there might be various kinds, you know, one can get it, so that it will be easier for to dig. And this is uh, known as a digging stick and in Sanskrit, you know, uh, in Vedic literature, it is known as the avri, right. And if you look at this avri is about uh, 1 cubic feet long, 1 cubic means basically 45 centimeter around that. And uh, this tends from the elbow to the finger, if you look at elbow here and to the finger, average, you know depend upon the height of the person, but in Indian system if one look at it, it will be around 45 centimeter, it, it can be also 40, you know that on an average that is a thing. And uh, this is also people use, there is another uh, instrument what is being used like here, if you look at this is a stick kind of things and it is having a cross bar, right, this is your cross bar. It can be made of stone, but what evidence we got is basically, you know, wood. Maybe people uh, might have used stone and then may to use the wood later on or vice versa. I think stone is, if you look at modern way of looking, people say stone is first and then later on. But my feeling is that maybe first is the wood or then maybe, I do not know, that is the controversy. But let us say that there is the evidence for that. And earlier ploughs were digging stick decorated with handles like for example, here these are handles you know, this is your handles. And uh, plough we will see, this is the primitive way of uh, ploughing and handles for pushing and pulling the things. And this thing can be used both for the labelling of the land and also for digging the holes, right. Suppose I want to put something I love to dig. So, this is a simple tool what people might have used earlier time. And uh, that is the another uh, things which is known as ho and in local language in Hindi, we still calling it as a kurpi, right. And kurpi, uh, if you look at, there are several kinds. Of course, uh, this, uh, can I call it as a kurpi, this one, this instrument, if you look at. What is the purpose? That is, uh, we call it as a sickle, right. And this, what purpose it will be used? Can I till it with this? I can, right, but it will be not that easy, right. And it is used for cutting the paddies or uh, sowing for particularly sowing or weeding. Right. Weeding, you know, is like to remove some unwanted uh, plants, whatever will be coming out. 
and uh, tilling of course, it will be little difficult, but there is another one uh, I was thinking to bring and show you because in my garden it this is having this is basically a known as khurpi in uh, UP this one right at even at this moment this is your khurpi and this is made of uh, iron or you call it steel right this will be which steel mild steel right this will be my made of mild steel and it is having a sharp edge this edge is sharp edge right and it can be used i have used myself with this and this is having an angle i just you know and there is a like this it will be and then there is a end here and then you put little it will act like a lever right with less force and this design well i have done myself i have used it is quite interesting very simple tool which you can use in your garden even somebody claims that you can also uh, what you call uh, handle the small little medium size land also for cultivation right so in the khurpi if you look at stone hoe uh, it's made of stone also in found in mehargarh and jatkara in khajurao in mp you might be knowing the khajura is famous for sun temple and uh, naga and sadhya hills of assam this we got from the archaeological excavations we have already got this thing and tool primary is uh, this tool basically used primary for tilling sowing and weeding as i have told earlier and uh, as i told this is a basically sickle which is a multi purpose you know tool uh, it's having a blade a metal blade a narrow blades and th this portion will be little uh, you know zigzag kind of things uh, so that uh, it will be easier to cut and sometimes it is sharp also right and handle is made of seasoned wood uh, this is made of wood right this is your handle and also earlier days people are using bones animal bones because right that is the but nowadays we are using the wood and those things are there still today that is the thing that means whatever it was there let us say 6, 7 thousand years ago and today we are having similar stuff going on and that is the thing what we are having. And there is another uh, instrument uh, or the tool which is being used is the spade right which uh, there are several evidences but I could manage to uh, get that uh, thing that it was found in 500 BC, BC means you know before common era. I think 2005 years or back around 2005 years back from now in Ujjain right. And this tool is basically primary for digging. Do you know the shape of the this spade? What, what do you call in Hindi this spade? Any idea? This is known as Kodal right. So, this will be looking like uh, you know uh, this is having a handle here this is uh, made of wood generally right and this is which is connected with that and this is the iron cutting plate this plate you know this is made of plates right you might have seen this thing right so this steel is being used and comprised of a blade and kind of things and there are several varieties I will show you another of them which is little modern maybe it is having the same piece here this is your surf and this is having a, a kind of a rod which is a having a surf here that hole. So, uh, this will be when I will use this lower portion when I will use upper portion if I say this is lower one or one sided you know on this example where I will be using and when I will be using. See if the soil is very hard naturally I will have to use this one are you getting this is for hard soil and once you do I want to take from one place to another it is if it is a soft soil 
or uh, you know muddy soil like you know uh, what you call not muddy like what uh, you are having you already being rained and it is become soft so this can be used for use for soft soil it is easy and also with with the help of this portion right this blade you can carry the material from one place to another you can throw right but with with the help of this portion you cannot so you can look at it is a very good design one can think of right you are doing two things with the same tool and plowing is uh, if you look at the plowing is a very important one right because we will have to plow uh, the land uh, before uh, cultivation and even after cultivations kind of things. So, uh, it is very important as I told this plow which was basically uh, according to our narrative Indian narratives it was made of design by the Balaram the we call him Haldar. So, this plow uh, is being joined you know with this connected this is your plow right and it will be uh, having a pole which will be connected to this bale uh, or the what you call the ox two oxen and then uh, it will be tilling the soil or the land and when you do that you will get something like a ridge here and this is like a furrow right then there will be there will be a deep drench you can say like a trench sorry trench and this is a ridge and it will be helpful and why you will do this plowing that is the question what might be coming to your mind is it not that i will take the seed and throw and then it will be germinated and it will be done and why should i do that are you getting this question right so <coughs> we will be answering this question if you do not know but think about it later on and if you look at this is this uh, fura what we call in satapata uh, brahmana like that is from the Veda, right? Uh, they consider this for a, is like the om in which seed are to be sown, right? Like in om, we will have to put a seed for the thing. Similarly, they consider that. In the Vedic era, people were having understanding what really it is having, right? Of course, they have written uh, in a very little cryptic way. And uh, that is another evidence if you look at the Milinda Pano, uh, that is the dialogue between the king uh, Menander and the Buddhist monk Nagashena around 100 BC, and who uh, emphasize the importance, you know, and the requirements for a successful crop that is, you know, basically well ploughed land is essential for successful crop right for getting a bumper uh, crop you know you need to plow it that means plow is important that dialogue you know is there and how to do and what are the things so uh, there is a also uh, sambarkta in panini panini you know like who was given the grammar which is very scientific of course, there are several grammar book, but Panini grammar book is known as Astadai. That means Astadai is written by Panini. He has compiled lot of things, and he has used this term, which provides basically you know plowing to be done one end to another. That means if there is a land, you will go from one end to another, and twice and second time in the reverse direction. That will go this way, and you will come this way right then only it will be the right one so what i am trying to do is basically i am giving evidence that look it is a, as old as our civilization that plowing is going on and there is another book which is known as krisi parasa even i think uh, 50 years back people were using it religiously unfortunately nowadays nobody knows about this book right but this was a and uh, there is a local version also there of the uh, local means if you go to Tamil Nadu it will be having different version but the most of the things are taken from here Krishi Parasar and other things and uh, that recommends plowing to be done five times in a year right if you are having 
two crops you know basically you do five times kind of things and uh, it is believed that fast plowing gives wealth and the third the desired object what you want and fifth will give you the rich harvest which is important right so that's why plowing plowing plays a very important role uh, for that but very important thing but plowing what is being prescribed that uh, that plowing must be restricted to sama means 14 angulas 10 inches around it should be less than that and why it is so why not more the way the tractor does if you use a tractor and its machineries for plowing right land tilling the land then it will be you know uh, going very deep why can't we do the deep is it th this is old one therefore he will be that you know their uh, tenants will be not right am i right actually it is not that means the modern way of tilling is not right you should not spoil the top soil when you do plowing what is happening the top soil will be entering into the next layer of soil and top soil is very important for the cultivation right and our ancestors were aware and they have also given the prescription that you should not go beyond the 10 inches around in modern they are talking about angulas right right so that is the thing what are, whereas the modern people were not aware till recently when there is a lot of problem people are finding out why we should not use tractors and then other instruments plowing instruments uh, devised by the modern people and we we are now seeing that look they were knowing you know where in your uh, you know uh, long time back our ancestors so that is very important but why i didn't tell you okay i am leaving that for you to think and explore but as i go along we will discuss as to the jataka story man's prosperity depends on the number of plows being possessed by him right that means more the plow will be that means more the land he can manage to till right that is the thing one can think of that means prosperity will mean. prosperity in getting the food producing the food not in uh, you know getting the uh, other things secondary things because the uh, farming or the crop farming or the food is the first primary wealth you know kind of thing so that was being emphasized that is why our culture whenever you know we think we ours is basically agricultural based country that is the reason and let me uh, just show you that uh, how this is going on plow of course uh, you can look at these videos and see that can you see that you know this is having a bell and then this is a one kind of a plow which is there and it is looks to be he is not doing anything very very nicely is doing and he is making this furrow and ridges right if you look at let me again like this is making furrow and ridges kind of thing very easily of course let me tell you it is not the raw the soil or the land it is already done earlier therefore it looks to be very easy okay you don't think that is that easy <laughs> and he is just not doing anything just holding and then going very easily right but it is being already ploughed and he is doing second times so therefore you know it is looks to be easier and uh, we'll be looking at also some parts of that and uh, let us look at the plough means you know how does it look and the plough you can get uh, you know in a terracotta and the sculptures we got it i mean like this is the terracotta uh, plow which is made of mud are you getting this terracotta is made of mud and this mud is being baked right right this is basically baked mud made of baked mud and uh, we got this evidence from banwali in banwali in haryana right in the place and which is quite old and vedic term for plow is langala or uh, some people call it also sira but there are two things word being used in vedas one is langala this langala 
is meant for plowing or breaking the ground. But sira is sowing the uh, kind of sowing plow you can say like suppose I want to have you know put the seed and then you know you will do something so that you will put the seed very easily right. And Rig Veda uh, in Rig Veda according to Rig Veda the plow is made of wood with smoothened handle and sharp pointed shape right. So, you might be thinking what is this? This if you look at uh, there is a handle here right, this is your handle and this is a um, plow right and this is of course, the pictorial let me show you another pictures this is basically a figure which is indicating you know plowing is being done. So, uh, this is the thing is your handle or the grip right this one will be a grip or a handle you can call and uh, this is your say body right. And this would be pointed in Vedic era the wood is being used this would be sharp enough to uh, pierce into the ground or the soil. And other way the refers to plowing drawn by 6 to 8 oxen this is really very uh, of course, uh, difficult to digest because what we are using may be 2 oxen or the 4 oxen I have not seen 6 to 8 in my lifetime of course, I am not exposed to the rural environment and most of you might not have seen nowadays tractors are being used. And this is of course, he is saying for hard soil that means more force is required right that might be the reason. And rig where the passage refers to use of horses for plowing and that is a very different thing because uh, Rig Vedic or the Vedic people were very fond of horses. So, and at that time they were using for plowing ok. So, the oxen should be coaxed gently not to be treated harshly you know. Today you might be finding that people are very cruel to the animal and they might be leer also that is why they are being asked not to be cruel to them, but to take care of them and gently or coax you know so that they will do the work for you. So, uh, and there are various kinds of plow you can design you can think of this is one kind of plow and there is another kind of plow if you look at this is your handle ok. Similarly, this is another kind of plow and this is another kind of various design you can get across the country, but unfortunately nowadays it is very difficult to get plow because most of people nowadays using the tractors and the tillers you know for the tilling the land. And uh, let us say that as I told that Vedic era people were using uh, the wood as a plow say right. And uh, when did iron plow say replace the wooden one that we will see. In pre Harappan period something 4000 to 3000 BC axe made of copper was used for agriculture work right. And that is being uh, you know being discussed and uh, whether it is how did they arrive at that this is a one question is coming to my mind you know. But however, there are several axe I have shown you and uh, here you can just have a look at it. And during Harappan time wood and stone plow were excavated were also found right. And uh, out of which is the agriculture instrument if or the tools if you look at the 19.2 instrument made of copper. Iron you know was not really being used in uh, Harappan period till now people are not having that evidence. And, um, and bronze were used in agricultural work right 88 percentage were axes therefore, they are deducting or they are thinking that axe might be used for the cultivation because the numbers are more and 3.4 percent hoe I have shown you the hoe I have I had shown you varieties of things and sickles is 4.2 percent and 4.2 is percent is plow share which is very very small in percentage that might be the reason why they are saying that the axe might be you know used 
for the cultivation purpose because Harappan uh, civilization was depending on the agriculture. And five types of axis, it can be flat, it can be shoulder, splayed or narrow splayed or long narrow. And this is uh, another one which uh, whether you call it uh, axe or not, but I think we call in Hindi is gaita, right. This is you know is a flat like this surface, like this surface here and then this will be also the surf in this side so that you can use and this is being used nowadays for making rubles out of concrete because it is having a very force you can do, right. And it can be used for also hard, uh, which one? Hard soil or the hard ground it will be used. And this is of course used for the cutting purposes. And then uh, if you look at this five type axis were uh, used for the digging, digging purposes, it um, you know they are found in uh, Calcolithic of the central India and also Deccan. Uh, Deccan region you know in the Tamil Nadu and then southern part of the portion and Neolithic and Calcolithic of South India. And beside this uh, you know lot of Persu, Persu you know like we are having a legend known as Persutam who was the might be the first person to have Persu I guess right and Persu looks like this. Persu is a you know, also used as a weapon for fighting for a war you know. And uh, that is, and then Kurpi, I already talked about Kurpi earlier, which is nothing but a hoax uh, and plowshare were uh, made of copper in hoard assembly. There are several things they have got it. And in Atharveda, uh, if you look at the volume uh, this uh, 3 and then 17.3, you can get Langala is described as a uh, Pavirvat. Pavira refers to basically surface like Bajra. Bajra, you know what Indira, Indira used to use, that is his weapon, is made of very hard steel and which is made of iron, Io Maya means Io means basically iron in ancient time and fixed at end of the plough for tearing the land, right. And Panini mentions, Panini means the author of Astadhai grammar, Sanskrit grammar. And he mentioned about plowshare, which is also known as kusi, made of iron. And in Vedic language is ayo bikara, right. So that means there is a, we are getting a lot of evidence that we are having this in the ancient time as well. And uh, Kokalika Sutta uh, is basically uh, uh, in the uh, in the Vedic text you can get. This is in Sutani. Uh, Sutta Nipata is a Buddhist text refers to Fala. Fala is basically being heated and making a sound when deep in water. What is the meaning of that? That is basically you are tempering it right and making it hard the iron and this process was there in where if you look at this is something maybe around 200 BC this is the thing. So it is not a new thing what we are talking about it is a very old in our country. And Mahabharata uh, and Manusmuti, the sky plow consists of iron blade and wood. Like this is custom ayo mukham. That means custom means wood, ayo means iron, mukham means in the front there will be iron. That means it looks to me during the Manu and then Mahabharata that uh, or in the maybe Buddhist period rather, right the iron has come into as a plow, right. That is the evidence what I could get. Of course, it is a debatable thing, but however, if you get something more, you can tell me, right, so that we can have a discussion to find out. And uh, it is being accepted, iron plow was used around something uh, 1000 to 800 BC, of course, little bit before the Buddha, even Buddha is 575 BC. So, 408 percentage of agriculture assemblies made of contents hue, sickle, pursue, plowshare from Jakhera region in Himachal Pradesh because people excavated and they are getting this kind of you know uh, tools for the agriculture. So, with this I will uh, stop over here 
and then um, we can see that what are the various components of the uh, what you call plow and then from where we will get the evidence that okay, how to design a plow. Because if today you will go to the farmer, you will say oh I do not know, I just do whatever earlier people, but we are having a design, I will be talking about in the next lecture that we are having design which is having related to the uh, a text which is very well known for the agriculture. So, with this I will stop over, we will again discuss about it and look at also various aspects of farming and what we need to do. Thank you very much.